Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Kevin T. Robertson, America's leading focus expert and the world's number one speaker coach right here with a powerful topic today. I'm going to be getting into multiple streams of income for professional speakers online and offline. We're going to start with offline, how to make money as a professional speaker. There are many ways that you can earn money as a speaker, and these multiple streams of income will serve you well as you start to develop your brand. What I want you to start thinking about is the ways in which you want to deliver your services. Okay, these are, I call them professional deliverables. These are your service offerings. What do you want to specialize in? Is it going to be keynote speeches? Is it, are you going to do half day programs? Are you going to do full day programs? Are you going to just specialize in one area? Are you going to do business consulting? Are you going to deliver on-site training? I'm going to break down all of these things today. And then on the back end of the Zoom call today, I'm going to talk about making money offline. Because if you haven't noticed what's happening right under your nose, because of the pandemic, all it's doing is creating, look at my fingers, all these different avenues for speakers to earn money. It's not time to retreat. It's time to build your level of skill and move on to do some very powerful things with your professional speaking career. Now, so as I see people are logging on to the call, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, wait, a little, wait for a couple more people to jump on, and then I'm gonna go all the way in. So remember, as you are thinking about developing your professional speaking career, remember that your speaker services are very great for any time of the year. As you see the signage right there for one of my, one of my speaking billboards that I take out when, when I used to go on tour, it says the perfect speaker for every time of the year. And if you have the right kind of value that you're delivering, your programs will be the perfect speaker for any time of the year. Understand this and hear me clear. There are 5,200 plus meetings going on in our industry every single day. I didn't say every single month. I said every single day. This is a multi-billion dollar industry of the conference industry and professional speaking. The speaking and training industry alone is billions and billions and billions of dollars. It has a growth rate of at least six to 12% every single year because of the insatiable appetite and need for personal and professional development. There is always going to be a need for a professional speaker. So today I'm going to cover all the multiple streams of income that you can make. Being a professional speaker, there are many ways to earn as a professional speaker, you should be working on these things. I think I see a question already. Oh, I think I got a question on one new message. Hey, Kev, sorry, it was uh, cutting out a bit. I think your connection okay. was bad. Okay, is it back now? Yeah, you're good now. Okay, we're good. I, I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. So again, today's topic, we're going to be talking about creating multiple streams of income as a professional speaker. By all means, if anybody has a question, use the raise hand feature. When you do that, make sure you unmute and you will be live with Kevin T. And then also when you put your hand down, make sure you mute on your end as well. So I see we got a whole lot of people, you know, uh, chiming in now. So I'm going to go in. Now, a lot of speakers are unaware that these other streams of income even exist. Today's topic is how to create multiple streams of income in your professional speaking business. I'm going to talk about offline first, and then I'm going to talk about online. Because many of you are missing opportunities because you simply don't know how to package your professional deliverables. Your service offerings should be very, very strong. So what I want to talk to you about is the following. Number one, let's talk about keynote speeches. Now, a keynote speech is typically one hour or any portion of one hour. For those of you who are in module two or you're in module one and we're talking about having the pricing conversation with the target buyer. While some other people are still chiming in, let me talk about how to set fees for your service offerings with all these different things. 
because there's a different fee for every single thing for one of your service offerings. And for each one of the streams of income you have, there's a different fee you should be charging. So let me just break it down into three categories. You're going to have a, so this is how you have the pricing conversation with the target buyer, because they always want to know why should we pay you your fee? How do you deliver value? Why should we be paying you? The conference coordinator, meeting and event planner always wants to know why they should be paying you, why you are the person they should hire. Well, when they ask you, what are your fees? You're gonna do this without stuttering. My fee range is as follows. $5,000 for one hour or any portion of one hour. $7,500 for a half day program, which is two to four hours. $10,000 for a full day program, which is four to eight hours. Those are my domestic fees, plus business class accommodations, hotel and airfare. You should be requesting a $100 meal per diem each day they have you on site. Your ground transportation should be luxury town car, SUV, limousine to pick you up from your home or your tour city destination airport. If you have to go speak overseas, which I've done 30 plus times, all the fees double on all levels plus expenses. That is how you should be getting compensated for all of your hour, two to four hour programs and four to eight hour programs. Now, again, the title of this Zoom meeting for all of our students is multiple streams of income. Let me go over number one is keynote speeches. Now, many of you Face, and then I give you the strategies to improve per personally and professionally right on the spot. It doesn't really matter what your keynote ability is. You should be thinking about a length of keynoting from an hour or any portion of one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, my keynote range is at $50,000 right now. It's just because I built a brand and, and I've been doing this for over 34 years. So obviously I didn't start at 50,000. When the pandemic is over, I may charge 100. It just depends on how I feel. Now, because when the demand is very high, you can charge more. But you, a lot of you, don't even know what you should be charging. So for an hour of your time, you should be charging the minimum, because they're not going to even take you serious unless you're charging at least 5000 I don't care if you never had a speaking engagement before in your life, you should be charging 5000 for one hour or any portion of one hour. I once got paid $7,500 to speak for 12 minutes. A lady comes over to me. She says, oh, KTR, uh, the president of the company, he ran over on the time. He flew in unexpectedly. He took at least 47 minutes of my hour for my keynote speech. So guess what? She comes over to me, she says, KTR, we only got roughly 12 minutes, maybe 15 minutes tops. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you still do your thing? I said, well, I already got the other half of my deposit money in my breast pocket to my custom sport coat. So of course I can do the keynote speech in 12 minutes. So guess what? I still did the keynote speech in 12 minutes. Let me see. Oh, remember if you have any questions, don't hesitate to use the raise hand feature on the Zoom call. So I'm telling you that it doesn't matter how long you spend in the hour. Keynotes are one hour or any portion of one hour. Now, let me move to the next one. If everyone wants to follow the outline, it's right there in your chat. The next one is called an educational keynote. Maybe some of you never heard of that before. I know you heard of the keynote speaker, right? Keynote speaker is typically the breakfast keynote speaker, the, the luncheon keynote speaker, the banquet awards ceremony keynote speaker. I love doing events in the evening because I get a chance to, to dress fly in black tie. I love events like that. People, I absolutely love the dress up part of being a professional speaker. I love it. So keynote speaking 
is an hour or any portion of an hour. Now, educational keynote, that's a little bit more, you're gonna have a, a, a you know, like a, a maybe a two or three page worksheet. You can go a little bit longer. It still has that energy, like a, the high energy, like a keynote, but you're going to have opportunity to fit in more nuggets. You're gonna be able to fit in more information. I would recommend that if you're doing a keynote speech, that you keep it around three to five bullets. No more than that. Don't have a lot of things on your PowerPoint or your overhead slide because it's going to look too cluttered. You probably have time to deliver at least three to five strong bullets in one hour. So just keep it real simple. Like, for instance, when I do a keynote speech, I may do the five keys to stay in focus on leadership development. Foresight, optical, cataracts, utopia, and scope. So I give a basic definition of the five keys during an hour keynote speech. It may sound something like this. For those of you who want to know how it's done on a really professional level. So ladies and gentlemen, the F is for foresight. Foresight is your ability to see into the future. You've got to be able to see your goals. Look beyond the horizon of your dreams to be able to manifest real success. The O is for optical. Websys defines optical as any type of device that aids you in sight. Listen, you've got to be able to you utilize resources to illuminate your path to greatness. And you're going to do that through mentorship and many other things that will allow you to see your goals very clear. The C is for cataracts in the acronym for focus. Cataracts is a gray or opaque area which causes partial or total blindness. Some of you in the audience need to cure possibility blindness. You simply don't believe that it's possible to happen, so therefore Awesome, did somebody have their hand up? Uh, no, I think we're good. Okay, all right. I think I saw somebody uh, go full screen on me. Okay, let me get back to my, my, my keynote. <laughs> the U in the acronym for FOCUS is utopia. Utopia is a perfect world or social order. You're going to know that I'm simply the greatest at making mistakes. You've got to become great at being bad first be before you can become good at being great. You have to be able to make mistakes. Now, what happens is you start to make more mistakes. You got to get the mistakes out the way as soon as possible and break that cycle of fear. And then when you start getting more mature in your skill set, you start settling down and you start understanding that perfectionism is a waste of time. It's all about overcoming the challenges and the limitations and the deficiencies that we have in order to move forward where it is you need to be. Uh, and the S in the acronym for FOCUS is for SCOPE. SCOPE is the area that the mind can cover. I've been studying a very fascinating subject called cognitive science, the study of the human mind for the past 30 plus years. Your brain has the ability to process millions and millions of auditory and visual thoughts per second. A computer, <laughs> a computer wishes it could process information as fast as a human mind. Your brain makes up about 2% of your entire body weight. We're only using about seven to 15% of our mental capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, we aren't even working our brains as hard as we possibly can. So the more you force in new learning, the sharper your recall ability becomes. So now, that was an example of me giving a keynote and a very brief overview of five keys to staying focused on leadership development. Now, if I wanted to do that and present that in the, in the format of a keynote speech for an hour or any portion, I could abbreviate that in, if they wanted me to speak for half an hour. I could also change the format if I wanted to speak for an hour. And I also could stretch it out a little bit longer and I could give a handout or a worksheet if I wanted to do an educational keynote. Educational keynotes are anywhere from one to two hours, no longer than that. Now, if you look in your outline, Betty Tucker, I think she has a question. Betty, do you have a question? Betty, I believe that you are not muted for whatever reason. So if you have, if you have a question, just raise your hand. I'm going to mute you because I hear some noise in the background. 
Okay, I'm gonna move forward. Now everyone, that was an example of formatting. If you want to deliver your keynote speeches or your service offerings or your professional deliverables, formatting is very, very important. An hour is a keynote speech. An educational keynote is typically no longer than two hours. Let's get into number three, which is a workshop. Now, workshops are typically two to four hours. Me personally, I love workshops. But I must warn you, if you're going to deliver workshops, and what I want you to understand in going after these multiple streams of income is that a speaker, you can specialize. I have some friends in the speaking industry. They strictly just do keynote speeches. They get on the plane, they speak for an hour, they get back on the plane, they go back home, or they go to their next tour date. Me, I like to mix it up. I love to do a little bit of them all. And throughout my 34 year career, delivering over 2,750 paid speaking engagements, I spent about 75% of my time in the corporate and association market delivering a while. topics that the market is already buying. Remember, if anybody has a question, please don't hesitate to raise your hand. Hey, Kevin, real quick. Uh, so Fonda Thompson put in the chat, my phone was going in and out. What does the O stand for? The O was for optical. The C was for cataracts. The U was for utopia. And the S was for scope. Foresight, optical, cataracts, utopia, and scope. Now, I have about literally 100 different ways that I have spelled focus throughout the course of my career. I'm America's leading focus expert, so everything with me is focus-based. So I use, I always teach from five basic keys or principles or systems or strategies or tools or steps or tips or, or pillars or whatever it is. You've got, to, you've got to make it resonate with people. And typically, the shorter you make the acronym, the easier it is for everybody to understand. Do I see another message down there, Troy, or somebody has another question? Okay, Fonda said, thank you. You're very welcome, Fonda. Now, Remember, keynote speech is one hour. Educational keynotes, two hours. Workshops, I love doing workshops. Here's the reason why. Because you actually gotta roll your sleeves up and you've gotta be incredibly skilled at Q&A. Let me share this for you, for all of you out there still holding on to dreams of being a motivational speaker because that is not what we teach on this platform. We teach you professional speaking skills. The three, KTR's three Ps, polished, poised, and professional. The reason why you don't even want to think about doing a workshop unless you have a high level of skill because people are going to be bombarding you with questions all day long. If you're doing a two hour presentation or a four hour, see a workshop can be two to four hours. Now I know what some of you are thinking, damn KTR, I don't have enough content for one hour. That's the reason why you need to go into module one <laughs> and, and get in there and organize your message. See, everybody wants to talk about all the la di da dancing through the daisies about being a motivation speaker. That shit is dead, okay? You better smarten up and learn about professional speaking because the conference coordinator, they want value. And if you're going to put yourself in a position where you're going to do a workshop <laughs> and rapid fire Q&A, you better have your stuff together. That's all I can tell you. Research, research, and more research. Remember, the speaker should be the most well-dressed in the room. As you can see, KTR looking very sharp behind you. And you should be the most well-versed and educated. If you're not, what the hell are they paying you to speak for? So I love doing workshops because it's a lot of personal interaction. You get a chance to get that hands-on feel. You know what I like about performing live? I love it because you're going to see a technique or a strategy that you utilize on the audience, you're gonna see whether or not it works or it doesn't work just like that. 
See, this is the reason why some of you trying to be comedians and you're trying to crack jokes in your presentation and you don't quite know how to roll it into your presentation. It takes time to develop a skill to learn your audience. I see somebody got their hand up. Troy, is that you that got your hand up? <laughs> yes, it is, sir. So I had an, a question that was sent in the email. Yes, sir. From someone that couldn't make it. So how do, how do, how do our students best utilize back of the room sales and what, what, what are good revenue streams for selling and when, when they're actually on the platform and they have, you know, a, a stand in the back of the room to sell things. Okay. <clears throat> I'm glad you asked that. So it doesn't matter if you are doing a keynote speech, a half day or a full day program, when you are selling from the stage and I'm, I will do a zoom call about how to sell from the platform because this very, specific things you're supposed to do from the platform to position the product. But what I will say, BOR is in our industry, that means back of room sales. BOR is for back of room sales. You could have a shrink wrap package with a, a thumb drive in it, a, a CD if you still want to do that, a, a book and a workbook to go along with a home study course. You could sell all of that for, I mean, the prices range from you know, $97 all the way up to $1,497, even more. So if you are speaking, this is what I recommend. Always put in the writer to your speaking engagement agreement that you need an assistant. If you don't travel with one like I do, you need an assistant. If you're just starting out and you, you can't, they won't pay, pay for your assistant to come. You just take the money out. If you're going to travel with somebody, Typically, my female coaching students don't like traveling alone, but some of, them, some of them are road warriors and they have to do it. But if you can take somebody, fine. If not, have the conference coordinator assign you an assistant. You should have a four foot by eight foot or four foot by 12 foot table, two chairs. Let the assistant take the money, process the credit cards, sign up for the mailing list, sign everybody in. You sign the books hug and kiss the babies, shake hands, network, but you are going to do this as soon as you come off the platform. Don't be taking time sucking up all the glory after you got a, a standing ovation, which feels really good, I must say. Or if you have a bunch of people in the line, see, this is the, this is the line you're gonna have. And you see, you're not gonna get this information anywhere else. You're gonna have women, gentlemen, you're gonna have women batting their eyes at you trying to get your number. Ladies, you're going to get guys trying to give you their number, trying to take you out to dinner. That's two lines. Now, you got another line where you're going to have people that's going to be trying to tell you their story and how you changed their lives. Then you're going to have another line of people that's got tears in their eyes, literally, because your message hit them right between the chest and it just touched their life. Then you're going to have another set of people that's just going to be trying to get a hug from you, uh, uh, shake your hand. Can I network with you? How do you get into the speaker game? They're not gonna want nothing, by the way. All these people in these lines are going to waste your time. Now that may sound a little cold right now, but let me tell you the line that's the most important. And you better hear me and hear me good. The line that's the most important are the ones that's buying product, number one. Number two, it's about 50 to $100,000 in that room who wants to come up to you and get your number and give you their contact information to say, hey, KTR, we want to book you to speak at our conference. Now, how are you going to get that fifty to $100,000 and manage that properly if you're jacking off with these other people in the line? Does that make sense? I hope that suffice for the question. Back of the room sales are huge. A speaker can typically earn anywhere from an additional 10 to 20%, sometimes more. I got some speaker friends of mine, they speak about once a month and all they do is sell product. They make $250,000 every time they speak and they do not charge a fee, but they make $250,000 worth of product. That's how good they are selling from the platform. We will cover that in another Zoom call. Now, I believe I was, number one, I'm gonna do a recap. I was on keynote speeches, an hour or any portion of an hour. Another stream of income is Educational keynotes, no more than two hours. A workshop, hey, you better be prepared. You have to have a high level of skill if you're gonna do a workshop. A workshop is very participatory. It's very interactive. That's why to properly service a workshop, you should be using something, and I want you to Google this. This is 
excuse me, this is something called a participant-centered learning style. Participant-centered learning is very engaging and very interactive. It's like looking at, looking at a Hollywood feature for two to four hours. You can't take your eyes off of it. But you got to develop skill in order to get good to deliver that. Now, remember, a workshop, they want to ask you questions. These people want to grow personally and professionally. So the responsibility falls on your shoulders to deliver value. So do not put yourself in a situation to do a workshop if you are, don't have a high level of skill. A speaker can masquerade their mistakes by doing keynote speeches. Because an hour goes by like that. You could be high energy and have a, a solid three to five bullets, and you don't even really have to have that, that a real high level of a talent. See me, I'm technically skilled as a speaker, and then I'm very naturally gifted as a speaker. But I busted my ass on the technical part, the articulation, the, the moving the content around in my head and the deliverability of the information, transferring the knowledge at a very high level. That's all skill, ladies and gentlemen. You can hide your mistakes doing keynote speeches. You cannot hide your mistakes doing a workshop because then people are going to be on you like white on rice. Okay, so just like Austin asked me the question about back of the room, right? There's nothing in my industry you can ask me that I'm not going to have the answer for. That's why I'm the world's number one speaker coach. That's why we have a platform where speakers can come and learn the speaker game. I'm not playing with this stuff. I take it serious. My energy and my passion is always high because I know what I'm doing. Okay? Do not put yourself in a situation to do a workshop if your game isn't trumped up extremely tight. That's all I'm telling you. Let me move on. Don't get me upset tonight, all right? <laughs> the next one is full day seminars. That's four to eight hours. <laughs> now, if you thought you had to have some skill to do a workshop, what do you think is going to happen to you if you have to perform for eight hours? See, I'm talking about there is a performance piece to doing a full day presentation. Listen, if you have it in your mind, that you're gonna do a lecture? Ha! Remember how boring you, one of your college professors or when you were in high school and somebody gave you a lecture. I'm, I'm not talking about the best class you had. I'm talking about the worst class you had. You wanted to slap somebody because that you were so bored. You wanted to get out of there. If you don't think that there is a theatrical and performance piece to professional speaking, you are sadly mistaken. I would not recommend that you, that you do a lecture, okay? Uh, lectures are very informative, don't get me wrong. But you gotta understand that if you don't deliver the value, it starts messing with the streams of income. Some of you who are not as skilled right now, I'd recommend you stick to doing keynote speeches. Go speak at a college or something, right? Where the expectation is not as high. You know, go speak in the youth market where the expectation is not as high. See, they're looking for a high energy program. But when you get over here in the corporate and association market, when you get over here with the big dogs, when you start getting $50,000 for a keynote, you've got to teach people both personally and professionally, and you've got to bring some value. If not, you know what you're going to hear in your evaluation form? You're gonna hear, oh, well, I learned maybe one or two things, but the information was very vague, very weak, very outdated. And for all you speakers out there who are quoting other speakers, and all your entire content is full of Zig Ziglar quotes, and Brian Tracy, and Les Brown, please, Jesus, please, can you help me? Help me get these people to understand, stop quoting other speakers in your program. Because if all you're doing is quoting other speakers, you know what the audience is looking at you? They're looking at you like, bro, sis, when am I going to hear an original thought from you? When am I going to hear some of your quotes, some of your ideologies, your methodology, your approach to leadership? See, some of you speakers that don't have a high level of skill, 
you need to be doing keynote speeches. You can masquerade your mistakes because you can get through the sequence rather quickly. If this hurts feelings, too bad. Go back to module one and get your messaging organized and get into module two and learn to build a marketing machine. Now, remember this about four to eight hour presentations. And, and Austin, if I'm missing any questions, please let me know, all right? I'm working over here. <laughs> all right, so now, if you, when you do a four to eight hour presentation, a seminar is a little bit different from a workshop. A workshop is more interactive. See, what I learned to do over the years, I learned to take the workshop format and drop it into the seminar format as well. Now, why, here's the difference. A workshop, roll your sleeves up, interactive, a lot of Q&A. A seminar, the seminar leader is typically just disseminating information. You take a couple of breaks and then they're going to hit you with, <clears throat> well, now it's time for the price. <laughs> like all of you on this call, we had to eventually get to the price and we worked the price out with you and you were on board and you're in the modules right now, you're doing your thing. So the seminar leader says, okay, we're going to get to the price. Now, if you've been to these real estate, seminars before or many other seminars and they have a high ticket item and they're going to say well today's price is ten thousand immediately what you see is half of the room will get up and leave they don't care they're just talking at you you're taking notes all day long they give you a workbook or something you're going through you're writing notes it's still got some value in there but remember most of the coaching industry and this is how i was able to find a space to get to number one. Most of the coaching industry is full of a lot of what, but not a lot of how. When you're doing a workshop, you've got to show them how to. Did you hear me? You've got to show them how to when you're doing a workshop. When you're doing a seminar, you're just talking. You're just talking. What I do is I show you how to from word go. Let me give you an example of how you should do your introduction. And I give you one of these in module number one as well, as I walk you through the art and science behind delivering the message. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kevin T. Robertson, America's leading focus expert. I am from the beautiful state of Maryland. I have a smile on my face. I have a song in my heart I'm gonna share it with the world. Today's topic I'm gonna to share with you is leadership strategies that magnify success. Today, I'm gonna to share with you five keys to stay focused on leadership development. I don't promise it to you, ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you when you leave here, you're gonna have a big S on your chest. You're gonna go out there and be equipped with Superman-like kryptonite fighting capabilities to become more effective at leadership development. Now, today, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna share personal experiences with you. I'm gonna share over and over with you about how I'm an expert at making mistakes and it's okay to fail. I'm gonna give you tips and tools and strategies and techniques. I'm going to empower you with real life scenarios so you can go back out there and utilize these strategies immediately. As we start moving through the session, if you have a question to ask me, by all means, raise your hand. I will stop the seminar dead in its tracks and I will be of service to you. That's the reason why I'm here. I know when they did my introduction that they called me America's leading focus expert. I don't want you to look at me like I'm an expert today. I want you to view me as a resource. I am here to be of service to you and work hard for you. Now, as we start to move forward, if, you're, if you are comfortable participating, then great. I want you to get the most out of the learning experience. I highly recommend that you take notes. I'm respectfully requesting your participation. Now that Kevin T. Robertson is in the building, let's do what it is that I came to do. Let's get into leadership development. I mean, damn, ladies and gentlemen, I'm simply the best you've ever seen in your life. Oh, my God. Was that amazing? Do you want your keynote speeches or your half day or your full day programs to sound like that? Well, I teach you the very exact same thing in module number one. Man, I miss being on the road. Troya, when are you gonna let me go back on tour, bro? I'm, I love coaching. Oh, it's coming, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna be going on tour again soon. Okay. You're amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Is that Mary? Yes. 
Hey, Mary Evans, one of my top female coaching students. I love you so much. We're going to be doing some big things with you. Mary, you got a question? No, I just wanted to let you know you're amazing. Thank you, Mary. Is, is Robin there with you? Nope, she's not. I'm all alone today. Okay, send her my love, okay? I will. I right, schedule a session with me real soon. Love you. Love you. Okay. Now, let's get back into it. Remember, quick recap. Keynote speeches, one hour. Educational keynotes, no more than two hours. What do you want to be your specialty? You don't have to do it all. You can just specialize in doing one. Remember, if, yours, if your skill is limited, I want you to focus on keynote speeches because you can get in and out relatively quickly, three to five bullets, boom, it's over. You got your money and you're going back home. When, when you want to start getting in the deep end of the ocean, and you want to start doing workshops, you got to roll your sleeves up. You got to, you got to be technically proficient with your level of expertise. The people simply want to grow. Now, then you're going to have your workshops two to four hours. That means you need content. I teach you how to write content in module number one. I teach you how to put together the content there in, in your speaker toolkit in module six. There are downloadable PowerPoint slides. For, and also for your worksheets, their worksheet templates. When I do a keynote speech or an uh, educational keynote, I give them a, a, a worksheet always so they can write something down. Also, you're going to have a workbook for a half day program, typically 15 to 30 pages. I talk about that in module one. If you have a full day program, I see uh, Daniel Forbes has a question. Uh, Daniel, I'll be right with you. And then when you're doing a full day presentation, your workbook is typically 30 to 60 pages long. Now, that sounds like a lot. Yes, it is. But you're going to need content. I even teach you how to put the content together. So you're capable of doing this. What do you want to specialize in? I'm talking about all the streams of income. Daniel has a question. Daniel, I'm going to unmute you. And Daniel, you are hot. Go ahead. Daniel. Daniel, can you hear me? Troy, I think I got a, uh, I see Danielle right there. Danielle yeah, has I can't hear you, Dan Danielle, check your audio settings. You might have to fix an issue. We can't hear you. Danielle, can you click your audio setting? I unmuted you. Danielle, say something. <laughs> uh, I hear her mouth moving, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't hear any, I don't hear any, I mean, I see her mouth moving, I don't hear any words. Daniel, if you could just type in the your question in the chat box, we can answer it that way as well. Okay, everyone, uh, while we are waiting for Danielle's question, if anybody else has a question, don't hesitate to be able to reach out. Remember that, okay, Daniel, I see her picture back. Okay, I unmuted her. Danielle, you still there? I still can't hear. I, I see you, I see you, but I see you, but I can't hear you. Okay, I'm gonna continue to move forward. Troy, if you can get that audio situation worked out, I'll have her type her question in the chat box. I do apologize, Danielle, for that technical difficulty. We got Austin Troy on the job. Thank you, Tina Marie. Okay, so now, remember, let's do a recap. Keynote speech is an hour. Educational keynotes, no more than two hours. You have your workshops that are two to four hours. I have this outline that's right there in the chat if you wanna go and see the different streams of revenue and which one you choose to focus on as a professional speaker. Now, also, let's get into on-site training. Okay, I see, uh, Troy, do I see the question in there? Um, yeah, Mary, Mary, I'll send you a link to the training modules. Okay, Mary, we'll take, uh, Austin, we'll take care of that right now. Okay, so module five is, uh, well, I'm sorry, not module five, but another stream of revenue, number five is on-site trainings. Now, for those of you who want to become skilled in the corporate market, corporations love bringing trainers on-site. I hear somebody's audio. 
Danielle, you there? Oh, God. oh I hear you now, Danielle. <laughs> Danielle, I hear you. You're there. I'm here. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. This is my first time using Zoom. It's, it's okay. I hear you now. What's going on with you, woman? How you feel? How are you? How are you? I'm so sorry to be disruptive in class. This is my first time using this app. Oh, so it's I okay. Apologize. It's okay. Hey, listen, I've been blessed with infinite patience. What's your question? I just um, wanted to make sure I was doing it right. That's all. I didn't know if this was already recorded, if I missed it, because we lost power for a minute, so I had to download the app. And so I just wanted to make sure that I was doing it right. So, no, nah, you're good. You're good to go. Thank you. <laughs> I love your book Sorry, cover. Don't let me it's okay. You. I love your book cover promo in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to you soon, Danielle. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm watching you. I'm going back to mute. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So remember, if you're doing on-site training, typically when you're in the corporate and association market, no, the corporate market, when you're in the corporate market, companies, small, medium, and large size corporations, they love to hire trainers. This is where you have to have some real facilitation skills. And let me, let me, let me get serious again with you for a second because you really need to hear me. The corporate and association market, they simply don't give a damn about your motivational skills, okay? They want some ROI on that money that they paid you to speak. And if you don't deliver, I can guarantee you'll never get a booking. When it happened to me the first time, when I took that motivational hype in there, it, it hurt so bad. This is what happens when you don't take the business serious, ladies and gentlemen. They will hand you your entire ass in different sections, and you will go running out of there with your feelings hurt. You've got to have real facilitation skills. You've got to know how to transfer knowledge if you're going to do on-site trainings. A company like one of my past companies is Haynes Brand. They have the dopest training facilities that I've ever seen in my life. It looks like, it looks like Star Wars. It's something out of Star Wars. The whole room is white. All the chairs and the desk are white. The computer terminals are white. It's this big screen that drops down out the sky. It's like a facilitator's dream. You have everything in there. You have whiteboard, dry erase board. You got the flip chart in there. Anything you need to teach is in there. So they typically are going to hire you for on-site training. I can tell you right now, the corporations typically don't want to do half-day programs. I have done my fair share of half-day programs if I have to do it in shifts. Sometimes all of the employees can't be pulled off the floor, so you have to do it in shifts. So you may, they may want to do it in blocks of time of four, four and four. I've done all kinds of weird scheduling. Uh, the U.S. Senate hired me one time, and I had to, my start time for my presentation was at midnight. <laughs> you, I, I trained from midnight to eight in the morning. So now, Remember when you're doing a full day presentation, I want to share this with you because you need to understand what you're getting yourself into. Now, you don't have to talk the entire time, but what they typically do, they have a meet and greet for you. They have a meet and greet for the speaker. You're going to be sitting with the executives. They have all kinds of stuff. This is why I love this business. They're going to invite you to the game afterwards. You're going to be sitting in the skybox with the, with the management. They're going to have you eat with the, manage, the managers or the executives or the owner. They're going to want you to eat breakfast with them. You're going to start in the morning around 8.30. Everybody's going to have some refreshments. The day always goes better when there's coffee, when there's tea, when there's some free donuts. If it's not, <laughs> believe me, people are going to come in there like this. See, this is why you got to be really good in the corporate market. Because they come in already pissed. You know what they're thinking? This is people's typical idea of training. Oh, man, I got to go sit in here and listen to this stupid speaker today. I know it's going to be boring all day long. So you know what I do? I catch them off guard. After I have my head seminar table set up up front, and I got my chair there, they walk in, the room is full. I come in from the back of the room, my microphone on my lapel, because when I'm doing training, I like both my hands free, because I got my pointer in there for the PowerPoint, and I may have a pen, a Sharpie in the other hand. 
So I'm ready to go to work. I say, good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning. Ho, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I am not feeling the love. Good morning again, everyone. Oh, good morning. Oh, that's more like it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin T. Robinson. I take control. That is my stage. It's my room. It's my head seminar table. I own everything in there. And your confidence is contagious. So from word go, you got to exude confidence and let them know you are in control. If you missed it the way I did it, back it up about 12, 15 minutes ago. Now, meet and greet after you finish the breakfast and get the donuts out the way you're going to jump into your presentation around 9 a.m your first break is going to occur right around 10 15 to 10 30. 15 minutes stretch your legs use the restroom everybody go get a snack and a drink <clears throat> you're going to need every single break when you're doing a full day presentation because it is freaking grueling now your lunch is always an hour some companies try to be cheap and they do a half an hour. I can't stand it when they do that. The companies that really know what's going on, they give you an hour. Some companies try to be cheap and bring the box lunch in there. And some companies do it right, where they have it catered, a nice meal. Or when you get your $100 meal per diem, I don't like going out. I like to stay in the venue and because uh, my lunch could run me $60. Yes, because I don't want to get caught up in traffic. And what you don't want to do is come back late from lunch, being the trainer. Oh man, you will, let me tell you something. They will never let you live it down on your evaluation form. Haters are gonna be the first ones to put down there, well, the trainer, he was teaching time management and organizational skills, <clears throat> but I see that he came back late from lunch. They're gonna tell on you like little babies and that's gonna mess your money up. You better hear what I'm saying to you. <clears throat> Excuse me, now, right i always give a challenge for everybody from lunch i say hey listen ladies and gentlemen we already wrapped up module one and two when we come back from the break i'm going to get into how to maintain leadership without damaging relationships so as you go to lunch i want you to think about something some of you are going to come back late from lunch and everybody's like oh no no not me not me i said okay guaranteed at least half of your seminar is going to come back late from lunch so what we do is the people that do show up on time like me i'm sitting in there waiting for them because you're not messing up my money the ones who come back late you know what we do we boo and clap at the same time boo just like that everybody that walks back through the door late every one of them we give it to them it's like a little inside joke but i told them not to show up late so that you get back into your session at one o'clock and you start facilitating some more. And your last break is around 2.15 or 2.30, another stretch your leg, restroom break. And then you typically go until 4 or 5 p.m. And then your workshop, I mean, your, your seminar day is over. Now, if you play it smart with the breaks, the lunch break, and if you do a Q&A at the end, and you break them up into a group activity, hint, hint, for about a half an hour, and you do a Q&A with the group activity, you only really have to speak for four hours. This is how you become smart being a real facilitator. This is how I learn how to deliver high value, but you're not speaking the whole time. You let the audience do some of the talking, so you're speaking less. I hope it's making sense to everybody because when you've had an aggressive style of facilitation like I have over the years, your voice is going to pay for it. Remember when James Brown was like 19 to 18, 19 years old, he was screaming and yelling up. When James Brown, by the time James Brown was 30, he wasn't ah! anymore. He was, ah! he wasn't screaming and yelling anymore. So your voice is going to change every decade. And if you don't think that you can lose your voice as a professional speaker, think again. Now, the next one is on-site strategic work sessions. <clears throat> I deliver these for many of my corporate clients. They bring me in as a consultant. You might want to call the on-site strategic work session like a focus group. I had to, I'm not at liberty because of my confidentiality agreement with the client, but I did a work session one time with one of the local clients in my area. And they had a problem with employees fighting on the floor. So the employees don't want to talk to each other. They want to, don't want to talk to the manager. 
So they brought me in to do a focus group. So what I did was I asked some very strategic questions to the frontline managers, the frontline employees, and then I took it back to the executives. I say, I, I submitted them a report. I got all the information because they don't want to talk to you. They don't like you because you're mismanaging things. Watch this, 76.5% of managers micromanage because they don't know how to manage the person because they lack people skills and they just try to manage the job. Don't you understand that if you train the person up, they're going to do their job effectively? You should be trying to manage the personality type. Thinkers, relators, directors, and socializers. Those are the four major personality types. I suggest you do some Myers-Briggs training and learn people from the inside out and then make your leadership style match with their personality type. That's how you become a strong facilitator. So I'm telling you that when you're doing a full day program or you're doing an on-site strategic work session, now an on-site strategic work session, it could last four to eight hours. I'm asking a series of questions. I'm dialoguing with people. What do you like? What don't you like? How do you hate your manager? Why are you encountering this situation? It's all conflict management, resolution skills, communication-based training. It's about leadership. It's about time management, organizational skills. It's about being able to galvanize team building. See, these are all, remember, you're delivering on-site presentations or on-site strategic work session. This is a soft skill. You have to develop your soft skills. Now, I want you to think about number seven is executive coaching. <clears throat> Excuse me. Executive coaching, you're going to be delivering this to upper management. Remember the upper management, their listening skills all the way across the board are below 42.3%. They listen differently. You can't just talk to an executive verbally. You got to hit them where it hurts. Show them some real hard numbers. I say, okay, listen, I'm going to submit you uh, with this report. See, I tell them up front, don't hire me and give me this big check if you don't want to hear the truth. Oh, no, 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 KTR. We want to hear the truth because we, we, we need some change. Okay. Okay. I hope you're prepared for it because it's going to be no holes barred. I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong and everybody else in your organization. I don't give a damn about your feelings. Here we go. Okay. So the reason why your productivity was off by 32.3% in the last fiscal quarter was because over 70% of your employees don't like this particular manager because of his management style. We got at least 20 plus employees that are affected by him. You have a high turnover rate. You have 16 to 25 employees wanting to leave your corporation every single month because there is no succession planning. There is no dynamic HR plan put together for them. Nobody pays attention to the employee handbook until something goes wrong. And you have a massive amount of self-esteem issues and your morale is horrible. Now, if you want to change X, Y, and Z, this is the corrective action plan. So not only do they pay me for the strategic work session, they're going to pay me for an executive coaching session, and then you're going to bring me back in to fix all of the stuff that you're not capable of being able to fix. And this is the reason why you can make, I'm talking about a ton of money in the world of professional speaking. If you're good, if you have the professional deliverables that can help the conference coordinator, meeting and event planner, HR director, head of training and development, or whatever title it is you're connecting with. When you're good people, they're going to be on you like white on rice. That's not a promise. That's a guarantee. Executive coaching. I don't give a damn how much they make. I break them all off and I break them all down. I put the facts right up in their face and make them deal with the truth. But executives don't listen until you start impacting the numbers. So I talk to them in a language that they understand. The reason why your productivity is off by 33.2% is because this is going on right here. Now, over a period of the next six months, we're talking about $2.3 million. Those, those 15 to 25 employees is leaving on an average of a salary of a 50 to $100,000. I mean, you're losing millions every single year just off of that. So when they try to tell you, 
oh, KTR, your fees are too high. What about that $2 million you lost last quarter? Was that high versus that $50,000 that you need to pay me? Oh, we talk about that in the speaker negotiating menu. We talk about that on how to set fees. You better know your value because if you think these conference coordinators aren't, they don't know how to play hardball, you better think again. Because before they issue you a purchase order and before they issue you that, that check that they cut through the accounting department, you go through the procurement process, you got to be able to show them value. Now, I talked about seven different revenue streams to make money offline. Now let's talk about ways to make money online. Ha <laughs> ha, all the pandemic did was create a jailbreak frenzy for all of you to create opportunities. You know, it's amazing to me how many ignorant people that show up on me and Austin's ad, or it's just like everybody is a CDC and COVID-19 expert. You're not. If you don't work for CDC, you're not. I suggest everybody shut up. And there's a whole lot of people talking shit about professional speaking and you don't have any facts. Let me give you the facts of what's happening because I'm the one talking to the conference coordinators every day. wealthy but barbara was talking about how she's tired of being cooped up in the house and she said if she gets one more invitation for a zoom call she's sick of it she wants to get outside so watch this there are skype calls teleconferences zoom meetings all kinds of workshops going on summits there is an insatiable appetite more than it's ever been before for great content. And you as professional speakers should be getting ready and prepare yourself to move forward in an era that we're in right now. We are in a glorious time to be an entrepreneur and a professional speaker. Not ever in the history and the business of professional speaking has it been more lucrative than it is right now. You better hear what I'm saying and listen to the facts and smarten up and learn how to take your business online. All of you can sign up for a Zoom account. All of you can sign up for a Skype account, a free, a free conference call account. Learn how to bring your value and your programs online through webinars, teleseminars, and video meetings video conferencing is huge this business is not shutting down it's only getting better it's getting bigger do you know what everybody's doing right now everybody's just figuring out see people are acting just like the dinosaurs all they did was just turn into something different the dinosaurs were here then it became extinct and then they just turned into a different kind of animal i'm a different kind of animal now i saw this happening five years ago so when I met Austin Troyer, I made it my business. I clearly knew he was a genius, but I knew that my business needed to be on a higher octane of fuel. So I said, look, man, stuck my hand out. I said, are you interested in a partnership? He said, yes, and we've been brothers ever since. That's the reason why we're number one, is our business has tripled since the pandemic. Huh, I wonder why. You know why? Because people are sick and tired. Let me ask you a question as I'm closing this Zoom call. Are you stuck in nine to five purgatory? Are you sick of being broke in desperation or begging mode? Because see, I've been there before. Are you, sick of, are you sick of listening to all the wrong people? Are you tired of not knowing what you're supposed to do with your professional speaking goals? See, on this platform, you don't have to scratch your head and wonder, oh, wonder how that works, uh-uh. You can always ask a question. You can always send through the chat box on the speaker Focus online platform. You can always ask the question every Monday at 6 p.m. And you can always get into our private group through school. If you have not got your invitation to school for our private group, I'm not talking about a private Facebook group. I'm talking about real private where we have a community of specialists, subject matter experts, 
and leading authorities and trusted advisors who all help each other. It's a machine learning tool that Troyer and his technical engineer buddies uh, conjured up for us so we can feed the data into the machine. So when you go into the search bar, it'll have everything in there you need on our platform. So I encourage all of you, if you have a question, address it through our school platform. That's S-K-O-O-L, by the way. Address it through there because all you're doing is helping another person who has the same challenge as you. And myself or Austin Troyer, it's not a promise, it's a guarantee. We will address these issues. We're still growing, we're still learning, but we're still number one. I want you to remember that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 7 p.m. I only have time for a call today. Me and Austin got some West Coast and some overseas calls that we gotta check on with some of our clients, so I'm not able to continue the call. Wait a minute, Troy has his hand up. Troy, talk to me, bro. Hey, Karis has a question, if you see in the chat box here. Yes, okay, Karis. It's in module two. It's, it's in module two? Oh, she says, in module two for market research, in a bullet, you say, start interviewing people who want you, who you want to provide service. How do we do that? What is the language you okay, use? Okay, now, the language, in, uh, that's a great question. She said, you need to start interviewing conference coordinators. Now, watch this. Now, you're not going in asking for a speaking engagement. You're going in building a relationship. So what I would do is get a free conference call, dot com number. If you don't have a Zoom call already, you don't necessarily need to do it through video. If you could, if you can do it through video, great. But just get a free conference call, dot com number. Call up the conference coordinator and say, hey, it's, it's Karis Reed. I have a, a, I have a blog radio show. I'm going to do a pre-recorded interview. I have about five questions I want to ask you. Now, you're asking them questions about what makes a speaker bookable. What things do you look for when you're putting together a conference, when you're making speaker selection? What do you look for? And you're going to be surprised at the information that you're going to pick up by talking to the target buyer. Remember, you're not going in as a motivational speaker. You're not going in to book a speaking engagement. You're going in to build a relationship. Now, this is something you can do in conjunction with your organic LinkedIn outreach your cold uh, email outreach that doesn't go into the spam folder, your direct mail outreach, or your digital marketing outreach, or your cold calling outreach. you based service offering let me say it again call up the conference coordinator via set up set up an interview with them via freeconferencecall.com give them the host and give them the guest pin no you take you you're the host they get the guest pin i apologize and then give them five to ten questions that you want to ask them but provide some value for them as a conference coordinator on your part say hey listen you know as you know, in our industry, talk to them like you understand the industry. Hey, listen, Ms. Johnson, in our industry, I often learn that you know, leadership development is all about galvanizing a team and making sure that your members have access to the right kind of resources. So what kind of resources do you look for when you are planning your conference in order to achieve a, a high level of success and get the results you're looking for? You see, now I just turned myself into a trusted advisor. Now, Karis, last but not least, you are going to freeconferencecall.com will let you download that in an mp3 file it'll send it to you right after the call you're going to record it send it to her with a follow-up email and now she hears your voice on the recording you can have some place on your website that you can put these interviews and now you are looked upon as a trusted advisor who's given information to the conference coordinator I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just simply the best you've ever seen in this industry. You will never see anything else like it. I simply love delivering value and service to you. I will see you right here next Monday, 6 p.m. I am Kevin T. Robertson, the world's number one speaker coach. I love you. Me and Austin will catch you right here the next time, okay? Enjoy the rest of your week.